as a follow-up to the video I made yesterday where I had the uh, diagram of the visual system showing how uh, the right hemisphere of the brain is attending to both the left peripheral field and the right peripheral field, and you'll see the picture here, while the left hemisphere of the brain is only paying attention to the right side of the peripheral field of vision. Uh, it means that humans are preferentially staying aware of stimuli of the world on the right side, and that's what accounts for this rightward orientation of the body, and along with the bigger right diaphragm, which you also show a picture. So the combination of the bigger right diaphragm and a visual system that is more in tune and with the right side of the world. And how do we get new stimuli? mostly through vision. It's, it's, it's the strongest sense. So those two things alone are enough to cause this left AIC, right BC, right TMCC pattern, which simply means that humans like to spend more time on the right foot and kind of pay attention to the right side of our body more than the left. That's all it's saying. It's not a problem. It's the dominant side. You have to have a dominant side. But sometimes people are still very skeptical because they've never heard about this. And I understand that. And they'll ask, well, where do you, how can you uh, read more about, is there any evidence for PRI? Can it, where are the research? Where's the research? Uh, or how do we learn, where can I learn more about it? Well, you really can't learn more about it unless you're taking seminars. Because it's not a thing. It's not a system. It is the actual description, the best actual description at this point in time, of how humans orient their bodies in space, how they stabilize their bodies, under stressful situations, how they breathe, and how they move. Uh, that is the, it, that's what, to me, that's what it is. It is the best description of how the brain does this, how our bodies do this, and what you can do when that right side becomes too dominant, in the sense that the balance between the right side and the left side is there when we're young, even though the right side's still dominant, uh, the, there is an overall balance to the, to, the, to the body, and it moves. But life, life, injuries, trauma, repetitive sports, whatever it's going to be, sitting too much, staring at a computer too much, all these things coalesce and come together to produce an orientation, a right orientation that never lets go. And if the right side never lets go, we can't get to the left side anymore. So again, where is the, the evidence? So let me, let me just read a couple different things from a couple different books. And you'll see that peop, this is, the evidence is there already in books, in research. It's already there. The founder of PRI just read the research and said, hey, I see there's this right side of phenomena that goes on. No one else is putting these puzzles, these pieces of the puzzle together. So let me just... From one of my favorite books of all time, if you want to understand PRI, read The Master and His Emissary, The Divided Nature of the Human Brain. Okay, um, he says, this goes exactly what, what I was saying yesterday, there is a fundamental asymmetry of concern about the whole picture. The right hemisphere is concerned with the whole of the world as available to the senses. Notice with this picture, the right hemisphere is paying attention to the left side and the right side. Whether what it receives comes from the left or the right, it delivers to us a single complete world of experience. The left hemisphere, look at the picture, seems to be concerned narrowly with the right half of space and the right half of the body. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body. We are right dominant. It's, that's its only concern, one part, the part it uses. So the left hemisphere of the brain is very narrow-minded. Look at the picture. See the focal point? See how the dots go straight up? It's, it, the left hemisphere is very focal. It has a very narrow focus, which is good because it lets, lets us focus on things and manipulate them and, and know them better. But when you have tunnel vision, you start to miss the big picture. And you can think of this as how societies are, this is how humans operate. We get so narrow-minded that we miss the big picture. And then this left hemisphere starts to overrule the right side, which is seeing the big picture. Most of us, as humans, our problems are 
we stop seeing the big picture. We stop using that right hemisphere, seeing the interconnections of the left side and the right side and the whole world, the connections between us and the environment, us and other people. We become so left hemisphere dominant to, to, for science to, to, to really uh, manipulate things more and more, to, to control them more and more, and it gets more and more frustrating because in reality we can't control the world, so we're effed. And the more you think that you can control anything, you're going to be very unhappy. So in this book, he goes on, in split brain patients, for example, the right hemisphere attends to the entire visual field, but the left hemisphere only to the right side. This refusal of the left hemisphere to acknowledge the left half of the world accounts for the fascinating phenomenon of hemi-neglect following a right hemisphere stroke, after which the individ individual is completely dependent on the left hemisphere to bring his body and his world into being. Okay. Uh, so that's number one. There's PRI. That's why we use left peripheral vision. We've got to get people paying attention to their left side of the world more, more than it already is. Uh, the Places That Scare You. Great book. A Guide to Fearlessness in Difficult Times. What does she say? Ooh, the in-between state. It takes some training to equate complete letting go with comfort. But in fact, nothing to hold on to is the root of happiness. There's a sense of freedom when we accept that we're not in control. Pointing ourselves toward what we would most like to avoid makes our barriers and shields permeable. Uh, so what is that? And, and translate, into, translate that into PRI. What is the first thing that we have to relearn how to do? Well, the right side has to learn how to let go and then give up control. And there's a moment of transition between that right side and the left side where your body's going from the right to neutrality to the left where your, your, your feet kind of have to leave the ground. You know, there's a transition point where you're going from right to left where you lose control and you just have to be kind of, your brain has to be assured that that left foot is going to be able to stabilize you on that left side. So it's the transition, the transitions in life that upset us the most, where we, we know we don't have control and it becomes very frightening. It's no different than in PRI. Your body has to let go of that safe right side to cross over to the left, which it has deemed unstable for some reason, or unusable, or unrecognizable, because you have hemi neglect. You had a, you didn't really have a stroke, but you might as well have had a stroke, uh, because people can't use the left side of their body. So there you go. She's saying the in-between state is where we spend most of our life. Uh, political parties, liberals and conservatives, they like going to one side or the other. They're good with one thing, they can't deal with the other thing. And God forbid there's any type of gray area in these people's lives. Look at people's personalities. They have to be right. They have to have some sort of control. They're not good with uncertainty. But the point of but the only way you can ever be relaxed and happy is to learn to deal with uncertainty and realize that the uncertainty is actually what makes life interesting. If everything was predictable, you'd be bored out of your mind. Yet at the same time, we want things to be predictable. Humans are completely, completely, inco not incoherent, but contradictory. We're all contradictory. We have to realize those contradictions, kind of laugh at them. So there you go. There's PRI right there. Uh, here's another one. Rhythms of the brain. And, oh, okay, finally. Speaking more generally, cortical networks, like the cortex of the brain, cortical networks gain their nonlinearity and functional complexity primarily from the inhibitory interneuron system. I have, I think I have two videos recently that I, where I mention PRI is mostly about inhibition, and that's what he's saying. Uh, the complexity of human movement and thought is not because of activity. We already, too much activity just promotes more activity and it goes in a very straight line. Inhibition, the ability to inhibit activity is what allows us to direct our energy and movement appropriately. That's what PRI is about. 
you have to be able to inhibit the overactivity of the dominant right side. Inhibition is the name of the game. Inhibition, as he's saying in this rhythms of, it's all rhythm. Everything's rhythm. Dancing, that's why you should learn how to dance. If you don't know how to dance, learn. If you say, I don't have any rhythm, learn rhythm. It's really not that hard for most people. I've done it for many, I've taught people 15 years. There's been almost nobody that couldn't find the beat eventually. And this was with salsa, which was pretty complex. Uh, but uh, the point is that inhibition allows for complexity of movement. It allows for adaptability of movement. When there's not enough inhibition and we're too tight, we're rigid, the system becomes rigid and breakable. You can't react to changing conditions in the universe or in the world or in your life. You have only one way of reacting, and that's tighten up. You're, when, when things scare you, you can't go into that in-between state and relax. You, you become rigid and tight, and you can't respond. So saying the same thing. And then another book, which I have already quoted from, but I just love this part, we talk about this right TMCC pattern that is a in the neck and the side of the head that results in spinal rotation of C1 and C2, so the top cervical vertebrae, to the right. It's part of an overall pattern, not just C1, C2, and C3. Now this gentleman notices this pattern, but he doesn't know what the pattern, he's not thinking of it in the t pattern of the entire body. But listen to what he says. The rotation of C1 and C2, so your top two cervical vertebrae, has evolutionary survival value. It puts pressure on the vertebral artery, reducing blood flow to the brainstem, which affects the function of the five nerves necessary for social engagement. So you become less socially engaged and more, in, and you start to withdraw into a fight or flight state. This puts us into a non-ventral vagal state, which in cases of danger can help our survival by shutting off the higher functions when we have to fight or flee, or when we cannot face the present situation physically or emotionally, we shut down. Uh, if our neuroception suddenly registers signals from the environment indicating that we are threatened or environment, signals from the environment indicating that we are threatened or in danger, this change in our physiology should be and will be instantaneous. And this is the, another important part. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, although our nervous system is quick to be upset, it takes a longer time to settle down when we are safe again. And that's, I mean, he goes on, why do we move our eyes in the basic, basic exercise? Because he's saying, how many times do I say vision and neck are married? Well, he's saying this. Uh, there's a direct neurological connection between the eight suboccipital muscles, the muscles in the base of your skull, and the muscles that move our eyeballs. All right, so he knows this too. He just doesn't see it as a bigger pattern that in fact, that you know, actually goes all the way down through your thorax, pelvis, and into, all the way down to the ground. So again, I love this book. And apparently a lot of people are finding my YouTube channel because of the, the uh, review I did of this book. I wish he saw it, but emotional environment. Your environment is so important. If you're in a toxic environment, happiness, all those things will affect what he was just saying. And yes, you'll probably find your neck is limited in movement because it never gets to relax. Uh, once you're stuck in this state for too long, things start to, to happen. You start to get really weird symptoms. Uh, is that why I got the ring in my ears? It's possible to say, but does it is it, pro is it possible that what he's saying uh, has affected my body in that way when I was so young? I think it's certainly plausible. Uh, but uncorrected vision, uh, the inability to sense the ground through your feet because you are wearing the wrong shoes, the shoes that your brain is not really comfortable with, any of those things can affect what he is talking about. He's just seeing it differently, but he's observing the phenomena, and he knows that is a flight or fight response, and it's an autonomic nervous system issue, and you have to get a sense of safety and security, which is exactly what I was talking about in the video yesterday for the gentleman who cannot shift into his left side because his brain does not feel safety. 
we have to give signals of safety. But if you're, in, if you're miserable in your life, where your home environment is terrible or toxic, maybe PRI is not what you need. Maybe, you know, no, you still, I mean, still, it will help still, but there's other bigger fish to fry, as they may say, because if, if this system does not relax because of life, it's going to inhibit your movement. So, and we talk about that in PRI all the time, whether you realize it or not. So, uh, there's your at least beginning evidence of PRI, but it's all around. If you, if you realize that PRI is just a description of how humans exist, then all of the evidence is readily available in front of you. You just don't see it like that. So hope that helped. If you liked it, you could like, share, subscribe, um, and yeah, whatever else. So happy, hope you have a great day.